There's a hack, yeah. and I think I saw that's, you that's eating that before. In one of my videos. Have you, you know, ever tried that I, before? No, 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 no. <laughs> no I, I don't think I can. What was the biggest, biggest culture shock that you experienced when you arrived in Vietnam? So, if any Nigerian or any African commit a crime, mm. and people are hungry, they are supposed to be hungry. The locals are supposed to be hungry. Yeah. How has your experience been? as somebody from Nigeria, from Africa, as a black man, has, have you experienced any kind of um, discrimination? One thing you can say correctly in Vietnamese. Xin chào. Xin chào. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and <get> apply. <laughs>
Some of them give their girlfriends, their partners, telephone to call their victim in Vietnamese. Because most of them cannot speak well with all these Vietnamese in Vietnamese language. So the government is supposed to create an awareness, which I'm ready to come out to address people, to advise them, you know, to speak to them that please, please, enough is enough. The crime emanating from Africans in Vietnam can be stopped, can be eradicated if there's a public awareness to all, especially the Vietnamese ladies. Women, yeah. Please be careful before you feel or fell in love with all these guys. It's very, very important. No, I'm not saying it's only the Africans. Yes. We have some Chinese in various prisons. Mm. We have some uh, Koreans, different Vietnamese, different. Australians, mm. different, you know. Mm. But because we want to protect the integrity of our nation, mm -hmm. of our country, Nigeria, Cameroon, Africa in general, we want to protect the integrity of our That's why Because this country, this country is a very good country for all of us. Yeah. There are a lot of opportunities in this country, not only for you to do illegalities, engage in illegalities. So if we can talk to people, can engage one-on-one -on -one conversation and address and advise them and share experience with them, I believe the crime, I'm not saying we stop, but it's going to reduce drastically. All right, sir. Um, coming from this angle, I can tell you that a lot of good people have been treated badly just because of the crime of a very few minority. How do you think in general? What's, let, me, let me just say it this way. How has your experience been as somebody from Nigeria, from Africa, as a black man? Has, have you experienced any kind of um, discrimination because of the activities of, uh, of our fellow citizens? Discrimination. Discrimination is a word emanated from the Western world. Mm. You know, to me, if you do wrong, yeah. someone cannot kill my brother mm. or send my brother to jail for a crime you commit. You know, and I will be happy. Okay, my brother was just killed, or someone, you know, I just woke up one day. And I realized that they arrest my brother and send him to jail. And the person that, that did the crime has run away. Will you be happy? Will I be happy? No. But if my brother is someone that is engaged in criminal heart, or my fellow is engaged in a criminal heart, and there's evidence to prove that. If they arrest Imoha, there won't be any problem. I would say, okay, he committed a crime, let him face the crime. So you can never fault the Vietnamese or fault people that are angry because of activities. what activities you have caused and to for example, to send their sisters mm. to prison or to spoil the image of their country yeah. or community mm -hmm. or kill indirectly with different kind of um, um, ecstasy or drugs. Their people, nobody will be happy with that. So when people say discrimination or racism or all these things, I don't believe that. It depends on your attitude towards people. But there's one thing, direct, direct hatred. Mm. If there's direct hatred, that is what we are totally against. So if any Nigerian or any African commit a crime mm. and people are hungry, they are supposed to be hungry. The locals are supposed to be hungry. Yeah. But a matter of time, if we now said, okay, let's give them time, let them just 
stay for some time and allow them for their grievance. Yeah. Within two weeks, within maximum a month, everything will die down. And if we start showing them, the rest of us start showing them that we are not the kind of person mm. they think we are. With our ways of life, with our actions, they will believe us. Mm. But within a month, another person is caught with the same kind of crime or even more than that. How will they be happy? That's true. We have to tell ourselves the fact. We have to tell ourselves the truth. Even within our country, this happens every day. In the US, it happens. So we are even lucky in this country. But I'm just appealing to our people. They should stop any illegalities, not only in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but everywhere around the world. By stopping that, I believe there are a lot of opportunities. Yeah. People love blacks. I don't want to see, I don't want to know. Our color, people love it. It's just the and character. You know, people love us. But our character has to change. Our way of life has to change. Asians in particular, and this country, Vietnam, they love us. Okay, sir. So, um, it's so interesting to hear that from you because most of the time we've, um, we've had to um, deal with a lot of issues that, that are the aftermath or the results of maybe another black guy committing a crime. And then the, the effects of that crime now spirals out of control and starts affecting all the blacks that are living in, in, in. what we are focusing on Vietnam is because this is our base this is where we live and uh, we just want to know the interaction and what we can do to ameliorate the situation because if somebody who is of Nigerian descent somebody who has the same color as I am commits a crime it's, an, it's all over the news it's it's very um, obvious that people will start referring to me as a brother to a criminal. And um, my question is, how do we change this perspective? What do we do? Do we, what do we do? Especially the media carries a lot. They have a lot of roles to play in that because we are all different. Let's say in Africa, there are over 50, 50, 59, 54, 55 countries. And in Nigeria alone, there are over 200 million people. And um, somebody cannot commit a crime, one single person, and I have to suffer for it. It's been going over and over and over. I, I really, I'm really looking for a solution that we have to condemn if it's Mike that commits a crime, that we penalize Mike and we don't affect Frank with the same crime. Because Frank might be a good person, a good teacher, a good businessman, but because of the effects of the crimes of Mike, it's now affecting Frank. Do you think there's anything we can do to change that? I tell you, this is a global issue, okay. not only Vietnam issue. Okay. You see, uh, there was a time the Americans, you know, they, there's a program they call Visa Lottery. Okay. Nigeria was included. Yemen, Syria, some uh, Muslim countries uh, were in included. But along the line, you know, um, they removed them, all these countries I mentioned, and some other countries from these um, um, welfare scheme, package. Yeah. Yes, game. You know, why they do that is because of terrorism and some other lesser crime that is emanating from all these states. You know, um, the country we have, it's a governed country that is um, uh, governed also by their national law yeah. and they are affiliated yeah. to all these international organizations yeah. like the UN, yeah. UNICEF and all this stuff. You know, but under the laws, of the national law have any of us studied the law well do we know the implications of our actions towards their law 
internationally also have all of us studied the law internationally and know what is the effect of the crime we are committing mm -hmm. i tell you one thing this is a very big example indonesia malaysia thailand years back they accept africans to come into their country mm -hmm. You have their tourist visa, you can come through the port of entry, they allow you to come in. China also, same. Vietnam, same. In fact, people that came here before us, they said even when they get to the airport, everybody, including the immigration officers, start talking, sharing, looking at them, taking pictures, hugging with them. And they are amazed. Wow, this country is so beautiful and lovely. People are lovely like this. But you know what? Since last five years, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, they have been sending Africans away. No more tourist visas. No more visa on arrival for these countries from Africans, from Africa, from African countries. Why? It's because of the policy they have to strengthen so that they can checkmate illegalities among emanating from all these African um, citizens. And it's not only that. They are doing that for other foreigners also. If they see the gravity of the crime that has been committed among the few of these people coming here, mm -hmm. how many are we in Vietnam? You cannot compare Chinese community Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in Vietnam. How many people are you? Just check the ratio. How many are we in Vietnam? Are we up to the Cambodian community? Are we up to the American community? Are we up to the Korean community there? We are just few. And the few, every month or every two months, there will be something mm -hmm. attached to that. Exactly. And that is why it's something that is worrisome. So when Vietnam, up to today, they still alive, but because of the pandemic, they still allow people with tourist visas to come in. Liberians, Ivory Coast, uh, Uganda, all these citizens, they can come in with tourist visas. That's not discrimination against them. Yeah. But when you do a crime, when you committed a crime, and when they arrest you, Everybody will say, oh, they are discriminating against us. You know, no, that is the law. That's the national law. And we, the international law, supported it. And you know what? No state can interfere with another state under international law. No state. So when we talk, we should direct our talk. When we do any action we took, we should direct our action towards what we have done. Because... If we continue to talk about discrimination in Vietnam, then I will take you out to another country yeah. with strict laws and you will compare Vietnam to that country. And at the end of the day, you will praise this country. <laughs> and you say, thank you, Vietnam. Thank you, Vietnam. Now I learned my lessons. Yeah. yeah. As a man who has traveled um, to so many countries, you've um, experienced different cultures different um, um, traditions what was the biggest biggest culture shock that you experienced when you arrived in vietnam you know i have spoken to a lot of people who say oh my god the motorbikes i was shocked i couldn't cross the streets when i came even <laughs> even the former president of um um america yeah when he came to vietnam mm -hmm. he was surprised <laughs> with the the, the level and the amount of motorbikes <laughs> you know in vietnam yeah. he said he has never seen salt before yes the same and with me we and also yes. we have never seen the amount though of in the northern side of nigeria you yeah. will see a lot of motorbikes but you cannot even compare it to a no. district no. you know or a community <laughs> you know in vietnam. in vietnam i think they're having the highest yes they're having the highest in the world what about the language 
Wow. How, were you, how were you able to like overcome the difficulty wow. to communicate, to buy things, to go around? Wow. <laughs> that's that's the most difficult okay the mo di most difficult um issue i'm still having up to now up to now you know the language 13 years after yes <laughs> vietnamese language is the most difficult and i have to praise you guys that uh speaking the language you know because uh it's it's a talent yeah to me it's a talent mm. You know, not everybody can do that. Not because I know, you're the smartest. I know, I know, I know a Japanese that have been here over 20 years. You know, over 25 years cannot speak uh, Vietnamese. Yeah. I know of a Korean Filipino. Yeah. You know that have been here for over 30 years since 1992. You know, cannot even speak uh, like me. You know, so I'm still I'm still a coach to some of them. Okay. You know, but I it, truly, truly, I must commend uh, most of our people. You know, that speak uh, Vietnamese in a formal way. Yeah. You know, it's it's very it's important. A thing, but yeah. one thing that uh, helped me is that <laughs> all the people God sent to me, mm. you know, it's they are very good. good in English. Yeah. You know. Both yeah. my wife yeah. and some Just other now. of my friends, yeah. you know, they are very good. You know, my best friend mm. is, is good in English. in English also. Very, very good <laughs> in English. And thanks to my son now, yeah. you know, he's teaching me at least to communicate with the mates and yeah. some locals uh, within, within yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, and recently, I mean, our last um, um, episode, we, we, one of the episodes, we spoke to a very a Cuban woman who's been here for some years. You didn't know what she said. She said, even if I live here for the next 50 years, I don't think I'll ever understand this language. I've tried, I've gone to school, I've done everything, but I don't think I have the, the grace to learn Vietnamese. So that's a very, I, everybody understands that Vietnamese you see, is mo mo Most of us, most of us that couldn't, I'm not justifying yeah. why we cannot speak, mm -hmm. but because of our time schedule, yeah. our, our working place, mm -hmm. you know, and if we don't have um, that time yeah. devoted, you know, to study or to practice, it will be very, very difficult. So I have to ask you, do you think it's time or it's about having the commitment to learning? Sure. It's, it's time. And the more you learn, the more you understand Vietnamese, the more opportunities you have. I've met foreigners who, who told me that, who were, I think they were upset that why there are not so many English speakers, which I think is wrong. Sure. I think it's wrong. If you are going to America, you are supposed to learn English. If you are going to Japan, you are supposed to learn Japanese. You don't expect you your see, locals to learn your language just to I believe it. it's ignorance, ignorance on the parts yeah. of those people mm -hmm. because one thing they're supposed to have knowledge of before coming here is that they should check online and know language. the official language of the people, mm -hmm. that the country they are coming. And the official language is Vietnamese. Yeah. So when a country official language is Vietnamese and you now came into the country and you are not happy which they cannot speak English I think the person have to go back to where it comes from <laughs> that's true that's true all right now um, just to um, um, touch on uh, you mentioned something before your beautiful wife your lovely son which is great your son speaks English or yes, speaks, how do you friendly. communicate friendly and friendly. Vietnamese yes <laughs> <laughs> how do you like sometimes also when he meets like a Vietnamese he speaks to them in Vietnamese Vietna and he identify them and he knows that this is a Vietnamese yes in his school he has a lot of foreigners and not so, so he switches Vietnamese. exactly <laughs> and sometimes he helps the teachers also really to communicate with the the younger kids that cannot uh, speak English but at home because your wife, I, I, I've met your wife, your wife is very fluent in, in English. Mm. So, does your son speak English with your wife and, uh, or, or Vietnamese? It depends <laughs> when we are together yeah. and we, our conversation is in English, yeah. we join yes. and we flow with it. <laughs> but when we, our conversation is, um, I'm not there anyway, yes. or she's talking to the nanny or the yeah. maid or, the, or some Vietnamese, Vietnamese friends, yeah. then if he's allowed to talk, yeah. 
uh, speaking Vietnamese. Okay, um, um, enough of uh, the family issues. I just want to, we're coming to the conclusion of this, uh, of this interview. I just want to ask you, what would you tell a black man from any part of the world, or let's just say foreigners in general who are coming to um, Vietnam for business or for work or for any skill um, migration that any skill that they have that they're migrating for what would you tell them about vietnam that they don't already know um number one i would advise them mm. that they should try to check well study well before getting their visas buying their tickets and coming into vietnam they should go online check about the country study about the country this is what helped me also yeah. Okay, and when they come in, after checking that, they should not only believe in the knowledge of what they have seen on, on the internet. They should now start, you know, engaging the locals, you know, trying to make friends with the locals, which is very, very important. Yeah. You know, by doing that, with the knowledge they have back home and engaging with the locals, then they can start up something because this is a diverse uh, land yeah. with many, many opportunities, many opportunities. And you know where there is love, opportunity comes yeah. in, in many, many ways, you know? So if the locals are happy with you, they love you, they encourage you, they want to identify themselves with you, nearing you the way they near me, the way they near some of us, I believe you can be successful you can be successful here. And I always encourage everybody, you know, that called me, oh, how is this country at governmental level back home in my country? Most of them have not been in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. But last, uh, last year, no, last two years, I think uh, May, the former president of Nigeria yeah. came in and we are engaging mm -hmm. ourselves in some discussion. And he was very surprised the way he saw the people, mm -hmm. the way he saw the development, you know, because he was the one that brought uh, the relationship, you know, and our mission, you know, diplomatic mission to Vietnam in 2006. Yeah. You know, so that was his first time. Last year was his first time after 2006 that he yeah. came in. So he saw a lot of differences, positive way. You know, and he was so happy. Mm. So back home also is preaching to people. You might have traveled everywhere. You have might be to UK, America, Canada, all these advanced country. countries. But please, you have to try Vietnam. Because many people don't know. Yeah. Like what I did not know A lot. years back. But now I can see, I can understand, and I can smell opportunities. Yeah in this country. So you can say that there is a cordial relationship between Africans and, and Vietnamese? Sure, there is. If you know the way, yeah. according to the law of the country, yeah. there's opportunities and there's cordial relationship. Yeah. But if you digress, you know, digress from the road that you are supposed to follow, that is when you will regret why you are in Vietnam, yeah. and not only Vietnam, why you will regret wherever you are, yeah. maybe in America or Canada or anywhere, yeah. you will regret that. Even in Nigeria, a lot of foreigners are arrested in Nigeria also. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, but people will not say that. Mm -hmm. But when you check online, you will see that. So it's very simple. Okay, all right, sir. Um, I, as a um, as you've been in Vietnam, Vietnam is more or less like your second home, mm. as it is for me. Like, um, I usually, I usually ask this question a lot. What would you say, like, in comparison, not in comparison, but different tastes, different people, different tastes. What food do you, do, appeals to you the most? <laughs> as you are in Vietnam, I expect you to be eating a lot of Vietnamese dish. Sure. Um, do you, are you, is that your primary like uh, means of um, 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 food or do you still get your African food here? 
Thank you. Very important question. Yeah. Because when we came in then, when I came in, it was very difficult to adjust. Yeah. Uh, so I limit myself to buying bread, milk, and doing um, me. <laughs> tea and all those. So even the barmaid then, yeah. I was scared because it's not something I love to exactly. eat. Yeah. You know, it's and different from our own exactly, type of but bread. The bread is similar to the Ghanaian yeah, bread you know, back then. Mm. You know, but later on, later on, I start seeing the way people eat and I said, okay, one day let me try this food. But I will just try. If it's not okay, then I will leave. But I tried um, the contam. Contam. You know, and because anytime I pass through my hotel then, smell very nice. And I said, <laughs> what kind of food is smelling like this? You know, but I'm scared of eating, but yeah. people are eating. Yeah. And the way they chew in their mouth and they eat, they enjoy the, the food. I said, no, I you. must enjoy this food. <laughs> you know, so one day I entered and I had the food. Yeah, and oh tam. my God. That was your first Vietnamese dish. My first Vietnamese food. Kum tam. Lovely. <laughs> and every time I always go there, you know, every afternoon, yeah. I would go to the restaurant. I said, okay, I want to buy this food. So I become one of their best customers. You know, later on, I start um, improving. Exper experience. Exactly. By me. Okay. You know, but now my favorite of them all is uh, four. Ooh. What? Four. Four ball. <laughs> yes. Not with the one with the, the app. Okay. Uh, L. Yeah, yeah. The P, the pork. Oh, the pork. You know, but the one with, uh, with the ball. Four ball. Yes, four exactly. Ball. Yeah. There's four hell, there's four game. Exactly. There's four ball. Exactly. Mm. So. It's a joy for yeah. me. Anytime me, my wife, and my son, we go together, we eat it, you know. Yeah. It's awesome. Very, very nice. So, four, four balls. Yes, is your, that's, is your, that's the best. You know, there are so many different types of four. There are so many. As, as I've already mentioned, four hell, four gear. And there's mm. a different way they also cook the four. The yes. four ball car. You, you might know <laughs> all that. <laughs> But I believe I've ate yeah. different kind of... Uh, yeah, over the years, you must have experimented yes, with the whole yes. lot of dishes. You know, when you are a married man also, yes. it, um, and you are married to a Vietnamese, yes. you have more opportunities to, to eat uh, the food. Vietnamese food. And the more my wife cooks, the more I enjoy the, more enjoy the Vietnamese uh, <laughs> cuisines. So, and to me, because yeah. of uh, the vegetables uh, that is attached always yeah, in their food, you know, it makes us uh, feel at home. Yeah. You know, and sometimes for like a week, yeah. I don't even think of uh, my Nigerian yeah, Nigerian, uh, dish. Nigerian dishes. Yeah, but uh, there's something you're missing. I think there are some some different types of Vietnamese dishes that I don't think you've tried yet. Mm. Have you tried like bum da mam tom? I might, <laughs> I might, but I don't know the name. <laughs> have you tried bum mam? Those are the ones that have the strong smell that the smell is very thick, very strong. No, 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 no. There are some, there are, there are, there are some of them that if I see like there's a hike, yeah, and I long. think I saw that's you eating that, eating that before. In one of my videos. Have you, you know? ever tried that before? No, 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 no. no I, I don't think I can. I, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can. You know, you know, you're not alone. Yeah. Even there are so many Vietnamese that I've spoken to that said they cannot in their let me, life. Let me share this experience. After I ate um, Kong Tam, uh, Tam yeah. when I came and I saw this egg, yeah. and I asked uh, the woman in the restaurant, how much is the egg? And very cheap. Thinking so it's I said, egg. okay, give me four of it. You know? <laughs> And when she gave me the four and she put difference, I said, no, no, they don't eat egg with all this kind of... So I just have to break Open and... Eat the egg. You know, as a normal <laughs> way egg, we used to do. Exactly. So the next thing I just used my hand. Boom. And I saw something. So I said, no, this one is spite egg. <laughs> you know? It's no, no, it's, it's a spite egg. And I called the woman, why? Why you give me spite egg? The woman was like, what happened? I said, okay, no problem, it's cheap. It's just 3,000 yeah. Vietnam yeah. on then. So open I one. open another one, same. <laughs> I open the fourth one, I, third one, I just leave the rest. <laughs> I, I said, how much is the money? Let me pay and, and go. Because you think the egg is that Exactly. Much. <laughs> but there was a day, yeah. I started seeing people, you know, in one restaurant again, eating, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. <laughs> Immediately, I stood up and I ran away. 
<laughs> you know, because I'm surprised. What kind of, what kind of food is this? But I was told later on <clears throat> that it's nourishing. Yeah, that's what I heard. You know, and, and it gives people more, you yeah. know, there's something it, it helps uh, the, the mind, yes. you know. But to me, <laughs> even if it is um, a vaccine, <laughs> I will not think. <laughs> you are not alone. I said, I've tried so many weird, strange dishes in Vietnam, but there are still so many that I dare not try. Uh, it's, 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 it's apologies anyway. No, it's, it, I, it's the thing is, the thing I is, cannot. some Vietnamese mm. understand that, especially mm. for foreigners. There are a lot of foreigners that I've even seen eating the hobby alone, but I still, it has to go past, it has to get past here first because I, I have maybe, to. Maybe those people are not cool, you know. <laughs> but, 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 but you know the funny thing, when you see the way the Vietnamese enjoy it and laughing and smiling, what it is, yeah, you'll be wondering what is exactly, going on. Exactly. Am I the one that has some problems or? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so I'm, I'm really I'm happy that we get to live in a country where we have a variety of dishes mm. that you can even forget your own local or mm. um, native dish and you can still survive and sure. have so many things sure. to, to pick from. Mm. There are so many different types of dishes mm. in Vietnam, so rich in vegetables and fruits and exactly. in, 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 in food. Different kind of fruits. Different. There are days that I will stand, I said I'm not eating any, any main meal or any full cost meal, I'm just gonna eat fruit mm. just for the whole day. And I have different varieties of food that I've not even seen in our place. Sure. That you just get to pick from. Sure. I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing about Vietnam that they are very rich in agriculture as well. Mm. So I want to ask you some of the final question is uh, knowing all the things you know in Vietnam, experiencing all the things you've experienced, what would you tell your younger self that came here 13 years ago? What advice or what would you say to that younger Solomon? Would you say, good job, or would you say, I should have made another decision? Hmm. You see, in life, mm. if you see yourself that you have not achieved anything, mm. that 13 years ago, you are better than mm. now, no then you have cause to regret the step you made. But when you see yourself now, that is far, far better mm. than 13 years ago, then you have cause to thank God for your life yeah. and also try to do more, you know, to not only to help yourself, but to help your community and also to help the land that is blessing you. Mm. You know, when you see your son grow, you see your wife happy, you are in good health. You see your business is uh, going, well. going on well. You know, you see your relations or your family, your in-laws, they're happy. You see the development of the nation growing when you are here. You see people around you getting more successful when you are here then you're supposed to thank God mm. and to know that you are on the right path. Yeah. I'm trying, trying so hard to knock myself out of asking this question, but I just can't, I just can't handle it. I need to get it out and ask you to tell me one thing you can say correctly in Vietnamese, because you've been here for a while. So tell me one of your, one of the first Vietnamese you ever, you ever learned. Xin chào. Xin chào. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and got plaid. <laughs> and got plaid. Trust me. Trust me. A lot of people still don't understand what that means. So, aside from that, um, I used to greet my mother-in-law, yeah. Concha Me. <laughs> my father-in-law, Concha Ba. Concha Ba. You know, so <laughs> I understand those those ones and you know chukmun namoy chukmun namoy <laughs> so it's seasonal every once a year yeah. you know you have to greet we have to greet ourselves in to wish ourselves well yes. so chukmun namoy so you know. i want to ask you what's the most difficult part 
you what's the most difficult thing for you in learning vietnamese many, what aspect of it many maybe i'm not good in language i don't know <laughs> but i try to study french just for its just for two weeks, but I can understand. You can understand. Yeah, but Vietnamese, Vietnamese I don't know. The tones are the I still, I, I think I have to ask, uh, I still have to ask uh, maybe my God and say how, <laughs> you know, <laughs> why is it <laughs> so difficult <laughs> that I couldn't. My wife is a Vietnamese, yeah. my son and people you around me. Vietnamese everywhere. So it's, I'm not happy with that also yeah. because I want to learn this language. Okay. I really love the language. So I really want to thank you for um, welcoming, it, welcoming us into your beautiful home, me and my team. It's my, it's my pleasure. <laughs> and so I much. have to thank you also for the good things you have been doing. Thank you. We've known each other for years and you have been very wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Afrovia TV, I'm uh, one of the biggest fans and also uh, your contribution to the African community also cannot be erased. Thank you. We noticed all. We are seeing all. We are being all. And we appreciate you. Thank you. And may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for loving Vietnam. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you for much. loving Africa. <laughs> and God bless Africa. God bless Vietnam. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the part where we come to the end of the show. Um, we've, uh, it's been a pleasure having Mr. Solomon Bamidele Jr. on today's episode of the show. And um, hopefully you continue to join us in our next episode as we move along, as we get to speak to a whole other um, people who have um, Afro culture, Afro descendants, and all the things African and Afro. So it's been a pleasure having you with us for the um, duration of this episode. We appreciate you and we thank you and hopefully you will join us in the next episode. I am your host, Mr. Nam, Vietnam's finest. See you all in the next episode. Sign out.